Okay, um, back at it this week after a, a week off uh, from competition. Uh, Cal Berkeley coming to town. Uh, outstanding football team, 5-0, and nationally ranked. Got a lot going for them. The quarterback is an exceptional player. Uh, got some receivers that are very, very good uh, defensively. Doing a great job of taking the ball away. They've, they've generated 18 takeaways this year, which leads the, leads the Pac-12 and is amongst the nation's leaders. And so we got our work cut out for us. Um, it's going to be good to get back on the field today and uh, get going and uh, start start our preparations for uh, for Cal Berkeley. So questions. So with the bye week off, did that give the players kind of a chance to come down from the high of beating Oregon and, and allow to really focus on this Cal team that's coming to town? I think that's part of it to decompress a little bit after an emotional win, but. Uh, you know, more than anything else is the physical healing. You know, we have guys that have been going at it now for about uh, eight straight weeks. You know, we consider the, the fall camp aspect of it as well. And so it's a good, uh, comes at a good time to, to uh, get healed up and uh, recharge your batteries, I guess you could say, and get ready for a, a tough eight game stretch, which begins with Cal Berkeley, obviously, this week. Along those lines, you've had experience with great teams that did remain grounded. What were the keys? to doing that? Well, I think, number one, it comes from within the team itself, and, and uh, we have great leadership on this team, and I think those guys are going to do a great job of, of uh, making sure that things continue uh, to be you know, handling our business the way that we have so far, and that's, uh, that's key. You know, this team has a maturity about it, which, which uh, reminds me of the, you know, the 08 team and the 04 team, same type of maturity with the players, same type of leadership. And so I think that's where it starts. Coach's job is to reinforce that and to make sure constant reminders of, of how to operate and what to, what to pay attention to, or in this case, what not to pay attention to. Kyle, there's been reports after people have uh, replaced turf that this turf hasn't settled as well. Have you guys had a chance to get on there? Or are, you, are you worried that the turf may not be settled by the time game day starts? No, not worried about it. Uh, and no, we haven't been on it yet, but we will be today. Uh, we'll be on it at least twice this week. Uh, we're scheduled for Monday and Thursday. If we get some weather, there might be some weather issues uh, tomorrow. It may be a third day on it. But uh, no, we don't. We don't feel it's going to be a factor as far as uh, any type of detriment because of the, I don't even know what unsettled turf is. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll be out there working on it, and, and uh, it'll be the same for both teams, you know, regardless of how it is. But we expect it to be very good. Kyle, how much have you seen out of uh, Jared Goff this season, and what would you know? how would you assess his play? He is a tremendous talent. Might be the first quarterback taken in the draft. There's a lot of people who believe that. Um, He's exceptionally accurate, 70%, over 70% completion percentage. Uh, he very rarely misses a throw, very rarely. And so you gotta, you got to try to do something to slow their throw game down. That's, that's what makes them go. I mean, they're doing a decent job running the ball, nearly 170 yards a week rushing the football too. So they're balanced. It's not as one-dimensional as some teams that just throw it every snap. But, but uh, they're doing a great job scoring points. You know, they score 43 points a, a week. And one thing that's really helped them is their defense. As I mentioned, the, the takeaways their defense has been able to generate. They're, they're constantly getting the ball back in their hands, which has really helped their cause. You've always said it takes four or five weeks before you can really start to assess whether teams should be ranked, where they should be ranked, and all that stuff. Now we're there. Does Cal look like a top 25 team on film? And do you feel like now that you've seen some of the other schools in the country, you guys are where you should be at that top five spot? Well, they they appear to be very, very good. I You know, it's it's tough when you don't see – I haven't had a chance to see every team play this year, and you were, as a coach, you get to, you don't very, very often get to see much football. You know, a bye week is an exception where you can watch a bunch of games, but, but uh, it's hard to get a feel nationally for, for you know, who's, who's playing uh, well, who's not. But uh, I can tell you right now that Cal has all our attention. They're, they're deserving a five and zero. You know, they've no one's really had an answer for their offense. And uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us. As far as we're concerned and our, our situation, we're just taking it week by week. And I'm going to amend that. It takes probably five or six weeks to to uh, <laughs> to make those calls. So ask me in a few. Weeks. Yeah. So just just ask me in a few weeks, and we'll have a better answer. Um, you know, we've we've seen that uh, I guess decoy punt return from uh, I guess the Seattle Seahawks had it on uh, last Sunday, and SUU ran it uh, against yeah, Weber State. The other day, um, do you feel like you guys have kind of sparked a trend in some way? <laughs> I guess, and I hope no one does it to us because we have no answer for it. That's, that's <laughs> the thing. It's you know, I'm not. It's tough to coach because when you, when you, uh, you know, when you, when you're punting 
outside of sky territory, what we call sky territory, or approaching the opponent's uh, territory, uh, you're trained to key the returner. And so it's, I, I guess now people might have to change that mindset and start to find the football regardless of where they are in the field of play. And so uh, we'll see how prevalent it becomes. It may just be a, something that's showing up for a couple of weeks and disappears for another couple of years. I don't know, but, but it, it's very tough. That's why we put it in is because we realize the difficulty of, of trying to defend it. And if you do it, you know, if everything lines up and the kick is kick where you anticipate it, it's really hard to defend. So, so uh, don't know. We'll see what happens, how it progresses. You have this great home field atmosphere, but your record in Pac-12 play is about the same home or road. Do you have any theories about that? No, I don't. And uh, but I can't say enough good things about our crowd and the and the support they give us. The the atmosphere Saturday night should be electric. I mean, it should be one of the the uh, the best crowds that we've had. And we, I seem to say that every week is because the uh, Michigan crowd was awesome and Utah State crowd. But but uh, for going on what last six years sellouts approaching 40 games in a row of sellout is uh, and it means so much to our players our players feed off of that and so the atmosphere at Rice Eccles is great now why we haven't fared much better there than than it uh, on the road I think you just attribute that to the level of competition that you're playing in the Pac-12. Kurt stole my good question but I'll follow up with it. Uh, <laughs> follow you... up with a crappy one? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Where's the goal line? <laughs> I'm speechless. So. Okay. Hey, why do you think road teams are so successful in this conference? I mean, we've seen it with Stanford winning this year. and why? why That's a that great happen? question. That is not a crappy question. That's a great question. I don't have an answer for it, and I, I can't remember. It seemed like we went through that. Well, in the rivalry game, you know, our, with our rivalry game, that that, that was uh, for for a lot of years, that was the exact same scenario. So the visiting team, for whatever reason, seemed to have the upper hand, and I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if it's just luck of the draw or, or what. But uh, you're right. So far this season, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but it's pretty heavy in the visitors' favor. So, good question. Don't know.